Manchester United won, Brighton three. Um, humbled, humbled, embarrassed. Um, Ten Hag got it completely wrong uh, from the start. Um, there's one thing about talking about everything that's going on outside of the club. There's one thing talking about all of the situations Ten Hag's had to deal with and, and those things are all true. But when you come to a, a team like Brighton at home and you try and change so much in such a short space of time, I know you touched and he tried, you wanted to play this before at Arsenal, it just didn't work. And one thing, trying new ideas, I don't mind, but the lack of adjustment during the game, the lack of the lack of trying to change things as the game went on just was from bad to worse. I mean, the first 15, 20 minutes, actually, I thought Manchester United were really good. We were winning the ball high up the pitch. We were pressing really well. And Rashford looked sharp. Eriksen looked good. Hoyland was, was getting involved. It looked like it was going to be a good afternoon. How wrong was I? And, it's, and the situation is, we have to give massive credit to Brighton because all Brighton did was work us out and say, right, let me get Veltman high, let's get Lamptey high. And when you've got Ericsson and McTominay as left of the diamond and right of the diamond respectively, the, the gaps were too big and the writing was on the wall. Now, Brighton put one good move together and scored and it was a good goal. But our lack of mentality, our lack of reaction, you could just see the confidence just get sucked out the players. And the truth is we never truly recovered from that. And I'm looking at the manager and I'm saying, how are you going to change this? Okay, you went with the two up front from the start and, and, and it worked for a small period, but it's not good enough. When you see that it's not working, there had to be some change. Now, individual, individually, we can talk about Rashford is, is, is after he looked sharp in the first sort of 20 minutes, he just went downhill from there. Casemiro looked like he was running with a parachute on his back, looked worse for wear, couldn't get about the pitch, basically blown out of his arse. You just got to call it as it is. Scott McTominay having to do those big gaps, having to, having to keep running out to Lamptey. The more the game went on, Lamptey just had an absolute field day and Scott couldn't cover the ground. Ericsson. He's never going to be able to cover that much space. Veltman just kept pushing on and on, leaving him hanging out to dry. He just couldn't do anything. Christian Eriksen, Bruno, he was just trying to do everything because the midfield was an absolute joke, to be honest. And, and it's, it's six to one, half a dozen the other in terms of if the manager set the players out to do that and they're unfamiliar with a new style of play, I understand it. But they needed help in that situation. He didn't want to start Palestri from, from, uh, uh, from the off. OK, we can clearly see what the thinking is there. He doesn't trust Palestri, he doesn't think he's ready. But as that game went on, we had to get wingers in there. We were too narrow, midfield just wasn't working and Brighton, fair play to them, just composed himself. And De Zerbi, he literally destroyed Ten Hag. He obliterated his tactics and Brighton just do what they do best. Kept moving the ball at will. People getting angry in the stands and, and annoyed and saying, go after them and run after them. But once you let a team like Brighton like that be in an ascendancy, you're toast. They've been a way to... To, to, to Arsenal, done the same thing, cooked them. They've done it at home against, you know, the best. You know, when Liverpool have gone there, stuck free past them. This is a fantastic team. And that's why a lot of people didn't pick Man United to win this game. Is this even an upset? And I think serious questions has to be asked about the decisions today in that 90 minutes. It just was not good enough. Apart from the first 15, 20 minutes, which was actually very good, ironically, it was an absolute mess and I think Ten Hag has a lot to answer for today. I love, I love Ten Hag and I think we do need to remain patient, but you have to criticise the decisions that were made today. And the substitutions that were made today were just mind-blowing. You know, taking off Martinez and, and essentially at one point, Bruno Fernandes went to centre-back. Like, what on earth do we expect to happen from that? Palestri, given a couple minutes near the end when the game's done. wan Saka coming on near the end. What's the point? It just didn't make sense. It really, really didn't make sense. And Manchester United are, are, are staring down the barrel of a, of a, of a mini a mini crisis here because it's very early on in the season so you know no need to panic but your next game's Bayern Munich you can't rock up there with that same diamond with them same players and them same exact same positions and expect anything different than another loss by at least two goals that's not going to work so there's a problem there so you're you're, you're anticipating a, a you know a god help us on the away at Bayern in the Allianz Arena then you've got to come back you've got to play Burnley away if we don't start picking up results soon the pressure's just going to intensify and Ten is going to find himself in such a mess that it's going to be really difficult to undo this early in the season we could ruin the rest of our season we really can um, you have to call out what you're seeing you know I think that there are positives in terms of 
we, we know we've got players to come back. We're dealing with a lot of injuries. I think this situation with the right-hand side now, now that Ant Anthony's not going to be here for the foreseeable, Jane Sancho's not going to be here for the foreseeable, you can clearly see it's going to hurt us because we don't have another naturally uh, good right winger. Ganacho isn't it. Rashford isn't it. And then you're saying, do you, do you want to be putting Bruno Fernandes out on the right? No, I do not. But at the moment, that might be the best, posi best position for him. If you're not going to fancy Palestri to do it, then we have to, we have to find somebody to do it because it's not working. It simply isn't working. Yes, there's injuries and yes, there's, there's things going on outside the club, but to, I can't excuse that. I can't just say, but Tenor's got a lot to deal with. No managers had to deal with it. You have to be accountable for the decisions you make within the 90 minutes. And today it just wasn't good enough. Do I feel, you know, do I feel a bit of agree with, with the players in terms of they're trying to do something that they're not used to and that's going to take time? I understand it. But it is a mess when you buy Mount to play a certain way, he gets injured now you can't play the way you want to play. Amrabat bought him injured, can't come in yet. You know, Hoyland had to take him off after 60 minutes. The whole place goes nuts and starts booing Martial when he comes on. But I understand it. I understand it. This is a, a guy that's had a back problem. Young kids had a back problem. Played 30 minutes against Arsenal. Come off the bench twice, I think, for Denmark in the international break. And we've got a massive game in only three days. If, if we, or, or a little bit more. If we don't get him the rest that he needs and ease him in, then what on earth are we going to do? What on earth are we going to do? We're going to be back to square one with Martial, not mobile. Can't do anything. Yeah, can hold up the ball, but that's about it. We're going to be back to square one. So I understand why Ten Hag took off Hoyland. That's probably the only thing I did understand, even though it was, it's frustrating to see because he was one of the bright sparks. Marcus Rashford, look, at the end of the day, if you look at the, the, the wingers that we've got on a consistent basis, right, whether it's Anthony and Rashford, we're seeing the same things. The decision-making is not there. Now, I said it last year, Rashi had a fantastic season on a personal level, scored 30 goals, but it felt like he was, he, he, he wasn't, he was carrying us himself, right? But it felt like he was having that good season alone, if you get what I mean. It wasn't through fantastic link-up play. It wasn't through everything was going through Rashford. He was the man of the moment, the man of the season. And, and he, he put us on his back and carried us. And I respect him for that. And it was fantastic. But the decision-making just needs to be more consistent from Rashi. Because when he goes wide, when he takes players down the, down the outside, like, like the goal that got rightfully so disallowed but by, by a whisker and crossed it for Hoyland. That's what we're going to be able to see against Forrest when he done it twice. That's what we're going to be able to see. But when his decision making goes out the window and he wants to take the glory for himself, that's a struggle. That's a struggle. So listen, I'm not just trying to only dig out Rashford because again, we were imbalanced from minute one to the end and apart from a good 15, 20 minutes period. But again, as soon as there's adversity up here, absolutely soft. Soft up here. Whenever something goes wrong, we capitulate. You know, they Brighton scored, couldn't get back into the game. We thought we scored, we couldn't get back into. And, and then again, mentality goes. Get into half time. What do we do? Allow them to do the same thing. Then the third happens. We score out of just a bit of individual brilliance from Hannibal. That's it. Other than that, still didn't have to do much in goal. Wasn't mad saves he had to make. Wasn't loads of shots raining on him. And Brighton were very, very comfortable. And actually on Brighton, they deserve all of the credit. In the, in the chat, you guys were saying to, to Ryan from TSR, he needs humbling. He's saying we're going to finish high in Man United. How do we take any of our players? And you look at that. You can see why he wouldn't take any of our players. Brighton, well-drilled, well-oiled machine, know exactly what they need to do. And like I said, that wasn't even their, their strongest team. Evan Ferguson comes walking on the pitch with a half an injury near the end, just strutting. Do you know what I mean? Jao Pedro, fantastic player, puts it in the top corner. Wasn't even their, their, big, their best team. And CISO out for pretty much the whole season. McAllister, gone. Caicedo, gone. Billy Gilmore's been one of their main players. Well, didn't even play. Came on in, in the end. So that just shows you when you, when you, when you play a certain way and you have a, a, a manager like Deserbi who gets the right players and a, and a club that's run correctly from top to bottom, that is the output. And they deserve, they deserve all, the, all, the, all the plaudits because they put us to the sword and embarrassed us. Danny Welbeck, you know, great movement, et cetera, et cetera. So we've only got ourselves to blame. It's going to be a long old season. It's going to be a tough old season. We expected to see improvement. We expected to see the scene kick on. If anything, we're going backwards. And I get it because there's so many things that need to happen for players to come back. There's so much for Ten Hag to contest with. But I'm saying as a result of that, it looks like we've got worse. The results are worse. The performances are worse. We need to click into gear. God help us going to Bayern because I can't see, I can't, I can't see how we get a positive result. And that's, that seems very defeatist, feels very negative, but that's how I feel about it. See you in Germany. Take care. Peace.